Good morning. We begin with the most competitive race in North Texas. It's Congressional District number 32, North Dallas, East Dallas, parts of Richardson, Saxe and Wiley. Pete Sessions is running for reelection and he is up first in studio with me and Bud Kennedy of the Star Telegram. Congressman, welcome back. Thank you. Oh, you. You've been busy. You've had a lot of high profile visits lately. Speaker Paul Ryan here a couple of weeks ago, Rudy Giuliani. Invitation you said to uh, uh, President Trump and to Vice President Pence. A lot of people might look at this and say, wow, he must be concerned. He's calling in a lot of guns from D.C. What should people take away from that? Well, this is the most uh, competitive and expensive race, so to speak, in the country. It's been pitched that way. Uh, and so the President of the United States is obviously involved. He's involved with us. I helped negotiate, helped negotiate on a regular basis with the administration. The advantages that we have made together, including the tax cuts and making our economy great, I'm proud of. And I'm proud of Mike Pence, who uh, is my political little brother in the House of Representatives was. He's a very dear friend. Uh, I'm a Republican, and they are too. You, do you expect either of them to be able to get this in their schedule and come down here? Well, they've been in, uh, we've, we've been told and we've said back to them, sure, we'd love to have you. I don't know what's going to happen, but I would expect that it would. So we're not going to shy away from that at all. You know, Pete, there's a, a poll that shows that this is a red district with trending purple at least. Beto O'Rourke is up about 15 points in this district. There's a tr The Trump disapproval rate is 60-40. Why do you think it's in your best efforts to run as an arch conservative in this campaign? You know, I, I am a conservative that is for stability and growth. I have a record of being pro-business. I have a record of making government uh, and the free enterprise system coexist with each other with a, an insistence that the free enterprise system uh, have those opportunities to grow jobs. We have the best economy we've had in 47 years. Dallas, Texas, as noted by the Dallas Morning News, it has benefited more in this tax cut than any other city in America. We'd also have the most to lose as a result of the policies that my opponent is pushing. Tell us how so. How have we benefited so much in the uh, Republican tax bill? Well, we've benefited because we have a great economy here. Uh, we have actually, something's very interesting, we have higher GDP than we do unemployment. 4.2% GDP, up from an average of 1.2 for eight years for Barack Obama and the Democrats, and unemployment here in Dallas of 3.5%, 3.9% across the country. My opponent wants to take us back to the old model, and I want to stay with the new model. We were told by President Obama, can't get to 4%. Donald Trump said we can get at least to 4 We're at 4.2. Let me switch off to a completely different topic here that's been in the news lately as well, too. Legalizing medical cannabis. Uh, you reportedly told mothers of children with autism who are advocating for this that you support solutions for our children to help improve their quality of life when nothing seems to help. To be clear, Congressman, do you support uh, legalizing medicinal uses for cannabis? There is a difference between the drops, which is non-hallucinogenic. Uh, so the and CBD THC, and non-THC. CBD, okay. absolutely, and I, and I am for it. I, as you know, I'm very close to the disability community. I have a, a, a Down syndrome son. That's part of when I come back every single weekend, I meet with groups and people in their houses and to see the plights that they go through. There are a huge number of parents that are struggling, not just with autism, but other uh, uh, you know, problems with their children. They need a chance and opportunity to, to work with their kids off the latest technical medical advances. And that is an advance that without getting their child high, takes care of many anxieties. And let me ask you about health care. You've been outspoken about Obamacare. Do you support Attorney General Paxton's lawsuit ending coverage for Americans with pre-existing conditions? Let me be blunt. I have never been for ending pre-existing conditions. My own bill does not do that. Uh, at all. And so what I would say to you is, is that we as Republicans are in favor of making sure that instead of moving backwards directly related to Medicare for all, which is single payer system, we want to move people up to where they have group coverage in a health care plan that's significantly like employer provided health care. Congressman, let's uh, address immigration briefly as well. Republicans have been in office two years. 
both uh, houses of Congress and the White House as well, too. GOP has yet to address immigration. Why not? Well, that's not actually correct. We did address it. We didn't pass it. And that is because not one single Democrat in the House of Representatives would vote for either a plan for guest worker or for a plan for making a pathway to citizenship. We had been told, we'd been negotiating for years and said, there will be a vote. And we had the vote. You remember, they shut down the government one of those CR weekends over this same issue. We brought the issue up. Two votes, the first two votes, not one Democratic vote. And so if you're expecting us to wander out there and initiate these ideas, we did. Do you and see an we believe we did the right thing. Got 220, we got 224 Republicans to vote on a positive basis for one of the bills. Uh, we're almost at a time or two, but do you see an opportunity to get both sides on board to get some type of comprehensive immigration reform passed? I do. Okay. Good I, I, what, what, what I'll say yeah. is... Republicans, I cannot speak for the Democrats. They want to play politics with this. We want to play policy. Congressman Pete Sessions, good to see you again. Thank you. Thank you.